here are the keys for the Ford Transit. So that will open the van. If you press it twice, it will open all the doors. If you open it once, it will open only the front door. That will lock just the front door. If you push that twice, it will close all doors and that will open the back door. This key is also used to open the fuel tank for the diesel. It's a diesel only vehicle. This key here is for your water tank and this key here is to open the shower provision on the outside of the vehicle. You do have a device that can adjust your rear view mirrors. So that's your right rear view mirror and that's your left rear view mirror. And then they can be adjusted by turning left or right, up or down. You've got your lights here. So that's how you turn your lights on for at night time. You've got your park lights. Here you've got your windscreen wipers. On your right side is your wipers. And if you push that, water will come out of your wipers too. Key obviously just goes straight into there. You can see your fuel gauge is at the top. So at the start of every rental, there should be a full tank of fuel and you do want to take a photo of your kilometres. And at the moment, the kilometres are saying 198,000 there, 070. So we do advise before every rental that you do take a photo of those two. On the left hand side, you've got your indicators, you've got your reverse camera, which you can see clearly the image there of that's the camera is situated underneath the bumper bar. Note the bumper bar at the top of the screen. When reversing at campsites, always get a spotter to provide guidance as things like overhanging trees could damage the top of the vehicle. Currently it's in reverse because we've got it in gear. It is a manual, obviously. The, here's your heat, so you can go your cool and your heat there. You can select your settings there. And if you do want air conditioner, you do need to push that button in and you'll see it lit up. You've got a cigarette lighter and you've also got your car play. So you can hook up to your smartphone just there. Always check your rear view mirror before you move. Set up your car play and you're off. So the stereo does have a radio and you can flick between the channels. You can also connect to it for Google Maps and it does connect via Bluetooth also. You're just gonna have to select the mode. But with Google Maps, I think you always need to plug in with the USB. So here you've got your electronic stability program. You've got your hazard lights and you've got your demister. This control is for your heating at the back, but that's now been taken out. So it won't work anymore. So you don't need to worry about that. When opening the bonnet, do you need to turn left, put your key there, you turn left and then turn right and that will open it. Brake fluid, power steering, engine oil, radiator water and windscreen wiper water. So we're at the back of the barn doors and it's openable just from this right side and then from the left. The barn doors are adjustable with this knob. So if you push that in, they will fold out all the way. And you've got some storage there for clothes, etc. Storage there for clothes. About a meter of storage. You've got a lockable container that's got a key and you've got your TV there and other things that you want to put in, such as laptops or passports. And that's lockable with a key, and the key does come out. So we'll put that back there. You've got your winder for the awning. Two camping chairs that the cabinets do have that there in order to open it. Another lockable container. A first aid kit, if you do use it, kindly replace that item for the next person. We've got a power adapter. It converts 10 amp to 15 amp. For example, if you are at a house, you can use that to plug in the 15 amp power cord. Here's your 15 amp power cord. If you are at a campsite, 
you do want to note the larger earth on the extension cord. We've got the living in a bubble fly screens. They just magnetize on the side of the barn doors and sliding door. The fly screen with the zip is for the barn doors and the fly screen with the magnets in the middle is for the sliding door. This is the hose for your waste. It is used to drain your waste tank and you will need to turn that into the open position. At the moment, that's in the open position and if you turn it to your left, that will be closed. That waste is only for your sink. You got a hammer, you got your pegs. In this bucket, you have a hose for filling the water tank, an attachment for the tap and the hose for putting fresh water in your water tank. It's a stainless steel water tank that holds 80 litres and your waste tank holds 50 litres. When closing the barn doors, always close the left side first and finish with the right. When filling up with water, you'll use this key and put it in there and turn it that way. You'll also need to open up the breather into the open position. That's currently now in the open position. That's the closed position. So when topping up with water, it needs to be in the open position right there. Once it gets full, you'll see water come out there or you'll check the gauge inside the vehicle to tell you how much water you have. Once finished, you can lock that and then lock that. Here's your power inlet. If you are low on battery power, you can plug in your 15 amp power cord there. We'll also note you've got a provision here for a shower. So there's the key, goes there, opens that up, and your shower's there. You've also got a mixer just there, and that's in the up position, which means it's closed. And the down position is on. You can mix to hot and cold, and you need the pump on. It is a trigger hose, so you do have to have that open in order for water to come out and obviously to have the pump on at the same time. We do have the shower awning by Nomad by Chaos and it's just unzipped it there and it's got these two little Valpros that unwind, come out and that rolls out all the way. Open up the arms. Arm out to the left and then pull the arm out to the right. It's got some zips just there, and we can peg them down. The great thing about the external shower is that it can double up as a place to put your porter toilet. And we'll open this up just there and take it inside. You've got a provision for the zip there and you can pull your plumbing through there. It's got plenty of stuff for your accessories. If you are after some additional privacy, you can a lid just in case there is rain, etc. You just roll that back up and pop that away. You can also use the shower to curtain inside for your toilet. All right, let's pack it up. Just before you roll the awning up, you do want to make sure it is dry. You don't want to be bringing the awning out also when it's high wind or extreme sort of conditions. You do also want to check that it is packed away before you drive off your campsite. You want to grab it from the bottom. Make sure it's straight, like that there, and roll it from the middle. Because you don't want it, if you roll it from the sides, it won't roll up evenly. You want to make sure that that clip is over the top of that bar, and the Velcro slots in like that. If you do have a flat tire, you've got a jack that's just located there, but you are to call NRMA Roadside Assist for this camper van and they will change it for you. So please do not change it yourself. 
and the tyre is located at the back of the van. You'll put the rod in there, you'll turn it around, the spare tyre will lower from underneath there. You'll find all your uh, accessories for the awning just there. You've got your awning winder just here which is clipped in with that grommet. We do encourage our customers not to bring the awning out because under certain conditions, the awning can get damaged and possibly ruin your holiday. But if the conditions are right, you're welcome to bring it out. You do want to check the flags and the trees that the wind is not blowing. And also if you're at a campsite and everyone has their awning in, it means that no one's bringing it out for a reason. There could be a storm coming or a gust of wind. If everyone's got it out, then there's a good chance that you could bring it out too. So just be wary of the conditions. Never leave the awning alone. Never leave it out while you're sleeping or never leave it out whilst you've gone away to the beach, etc., to the shops, because you could come back with it damaged, blown over the top of your vehicle. And it does mean that you do have to connect it, which can be a, a bit of a hassle on your holiday. So I'll show you how to open the toolie awning with this winder. Pop that in there and then 90 degrees to the awning you'll wind it out. Always make sure your sliding door is closed. The further you bring it out the more chance wind can grab it and throw it away. So if we'll bring out the awning out this far. See it's got these clips here where the legs are so you'll push that You'll give that a push like that, and then the leg will come unfolding. Open that, and push that down. Here you'll find the pegs for the awning, and the hammer. These are the pegs for the awning near the sliding door, and this is the peg for the shower awning on the other side. Grab your hammer and let's put them in. Each side requires two pegs. You want to note that the awning comes with an LED light strip. So when it's out, you can see what you're doing. When packing up the awning, we pretty much will do it in the reverse order as how we pulled it out. So we'll grab the hammer and pull out the pegs. So we've pulled out the pegs from the other side and then we have to close, fold up the legs that way. And you push that in, in order for that to lock in. Just make sure that that is pushed all the way in and locked in there. And now we'll wind the warning away. You might want to note to make sure that the awning is shut you'll see that this sits flush back to there so you've just got your water gauge just here so as you can see we've got two bars for the water the left side is your fresh water your right side is your waste and at the moment your waste is empty and you've got a little bit of water there and you activate that by pressing the test button the next one over is your Victron Energy Monitor. At the moment, it's saying 99.9% .9 battery. So that's your battery usage there, and that will tell you how much power you've got left. On the far right, it's your fridge switch. You can leave it on, and if you do find it a little bit noisy at night, which you, some people may be sensitive in their sleep, they can turn it off. Here is the controller for your Wabasto cooktop. The cooktop is turned on with this button there that's your gauge for how much temperature you want and that's if you're at high altitude so when you're at high altitude you should always use alpine diesel and in order for this controller to work you always press the button once and let it sit it will take three minutes to start to work and to get warm and by the six minute mark it will get screaming hot you don't want to push the button on and off or else it will put it in error mode and you will have to restart the system or reboot it by pulling out the fuse which is located under the bed. 
This controller here is for your hot water unit. If you push this button on straight away, it will go into infinity mode. The green button means it's now turned on. So now we're actually heating up the hot water. If you turn to the left, you can put it on a timer. It's giving you an option. So that's how much minutes it will go on for and then it will automatically turn off. I'll put it on for 15 minutes, push that button and it will automatically turn off in 15 minutes. This is for your light switch. These are for your left lights. That's for your right lights. That's for your A for awning light. These buttons do nothing with the dot on it. That's your P for pump, which is your water pump. If you push the switches again, everything will turn off. Or you can press this button, which will pretty much turn everything off here. Now, in order for us to activate the heater, you need to have the diesel hot water unit on because they run in conjunction with each other. So this fan will now blow out hot air. So it's got two switches, a one and a two. And the two obviously will blow out more air than the one. And everything is turned off from that. So once we turn this, push that button, that green button fades. Now the heater is off from this switch. And now that is off, it's turned off the hot water. So in order to get heat, you must have the hot water unit on. Unfortunately, the cooktop is, is right near the opening of where the sliding door is. So you do want to be careful when you walk in if it is hot. So don't put your hand there or else you might get burnt. The thing with the diesel cooktop is that both of the elements go on. So the right side and the left side both go on at the same time. This one gets hotter than that one. So that one will get you to boiling point and that's more of a simmer. It is made out of toughened glass. So whatever you do, don't drop anything on it because it may crack. And if it does crack, it may turn into a hairline fracture and it will need to get replaced. So just be very careful. Don't drop anything from high distances. You've got your fridge just down here. It's openable with that there. It's actually turned on at the moment. You can see the lights are turned on. We'll just put it on level three at the moment, which is just there. And your freezer there. In order to cool down your van and cross ventilate it, you do want to turn on your max fan, which will help draw air through the van. And you may want to open up your back window to help cross ventilate the van. That'll help things like fresh air come in, smells go away, and also assist in preventing mold grow in the van. You'll notice the max van controller is just up here. Your max van is a rain dome, so it can pushing air from the outside. It can work when it's raining and it is activated with a remote or you can actually set it to 26 degrees. So if you are parked at a car park, the van does get a bit too hot, the fan will kick in at 26 degrees. And that's also your wine guard for your antenna. This is for free to air TV. So in order to wind it up, you'll go like that. And that'll wind up the antenna up there. Once it gets all the way to the top, you can point the antenna in the direction you want by opening it like that. That's done by pulling the circular plate down. You need to set your antenna in the right position. The best way to cheat is just by, if you are at a campsite, follow everyone else's directional antenna and you'll be able to get the connection that way by following which way they're pointing their antenna. The antenna always has to be stowed away when driving, so you'll have to lower it, but you've always got to make sure the triangles line up so the antenna folds directly down on the van. If the arrows don't line up, it could make the antenna point in the wrong direction and therefore may cause an accident while you're driving. We've just got the sink here. You got that there, sink, hot and cold obviously you have to turn the pump on in order to use it you've got all your cleaning equipment just there you need to activate that clip and you've got for hot water a tea strainer there for making tea cooking utensils there espresso machine grounded coffee only cups salt and pepper 
and just make sure that this is turned down ways in order for this lid to close. Top shelf, you should find a chamois and tea towel. Pots, pans, plates. You've got your tables there and your brush and pan. And then you've got, this is for your waste. So you can put your green waste in here and then your hard rubbish just there for when you want to take it away for recycling. Head cabinets here, which you can use as storage. It goes all the way there and all the way back. You've also got your blind coverings. So we suggest you put your blind coverings for the right side on your right side of the van and your left side for the left side of the van. They are all labelled, so you will know which goes where. They just magnet magnetise on the side of the frame. I'm just about to show you now the pull-up bed. So you'll pull that up, activate the lever just there, and you've got a porta potty just there. On the wall of where the power box is, you will see this cap. You'll have to remove it, and there are the fuses. You'll have to remove the fuse that's related to the cooktop if you do need to reset it, or for the hot water unit via this position here. You've got your blind coverings too for your front windscreen. You've got your battery power there, and you've also got your hot water unit, which is diesel run. It gets extremely hot, so whatever you do, do not put anything on top of it. So clear steer of storage in there. You've got some storage just there to put things that you want to put. You can also access, you've got your camping chairs there available. And we'll pop that down, and you do want to turn the turn snib when you put it down so it does not damage this. So I'll quickly show you how to hook up the TV. I'll just put the, attach the TV to the wall. Pretty much pop that there and let that clip in. So now that's attached. If you do need to adjust the TV, you can use this Allen key, which is provided in the white box and turn that to adjust these or adjust these accordingly. The TV is now movable. We've also comes with different accessories, such as the Chromecast. The Chromecast pretty much is a little dongle which connects to your laptop or TV via Bluetooth. They both pl plug into that, that side and that side, and then that plugs into the TV. So you grab this dongle, plug it into the TV and it will hook up to your Bluetooth, to your phone or to your laptop. Cigarette lighter plugs in and this is where you get your power. At the moment here, you've got a USB plug in order to charge your phones, which hooks up to the house battery. You've got your power there. That's for your coaxial, for your free to air TV, if you want to access the antenna. And when you're accessing the antenna, you'll want to turn the booster on for the signal. That's the power there for that. These are the two controls it comes with. You've got your YouTube, Netflix, and Google Play, for that's for your Chromecast. And this is for tuning in to your TV, and that will give you your auto-tune for your free-to-air TV. So we're gonna show you how to flip the chairs around in the Ford Transit. So they are captain chairs. So what we'll do was we'll activate that now, and you'll turn that around. You'll need to slide it forward and juggle these two between you. If it does get caught here, it's because this is moved. So just make sure it's in the open position and spin that right around. When doing the other side, you're always gonna to have to make sure that you're in a flat area and you're in gear because in order to get this chair around, you're gonna to have to drop the park brake. So what we'll do, we'll drop the park brake now. We've got it in gear. We'll drop the park brake and we'll spin that around. So the way we do it is by winding this as far forward as we can. It's a bit of a juggling at this one. You're gonna have to find that the orange clip, which is just there, and then it'll help you turn that around. You obviously have to wind this as much as possible in order for that to get around the steering wheel. You can slide it forward now, and now you can bring it back. Last but not least, once you've finished doing all that, you can make sure you pull up the park brake to make sure the car doesn't roll. 
but always make sure it's in gear. So now you've flipped the captain chairs around, we'll show you a quick demonstration on how to set up the table so you can have your breakfast, lunch or dinner. So you're gonna to have to open up this cabinet with this trigger there, make sure you get to that clip. I'll pull out the tables now. You'll see you've got a brush and pan there also. The smaller table is for this position here. So you'll plug that in like that. And you'll put that table just there, pop that just there, and you can adjust the legs as you go. This table opens up like that. And right there, the legs are adjustable at the bottom. So you'll level it like that. And you can slide the table in or push it out accordingly to how you want it. The tables are made of European poplar, so it is a lightweight ply. It's oiled with a no VOC oil, which is a food grade oil. When you finish at your campsite, you do want to spin your captain chair around and make sure it's facing forward when driving. You do also want to make sure that that's pushed back to make sure it's locked in so it doesn't spin around. You're going to make sure it's in gear and obviously you've parked on a flat surface. We're going to drop the park brake. I'll have to wind the chair forward in order for it to get around the steering wheel. So they always spin inwards. And now that's cleared the park brake. And now that's clipped in and we'll wind it all the way back. Just for any emergency, you do need a fire extinguisher. It's just there. And you do have a fire blanket there, which is activated by pulling these togs. Also, you do have a smoke alarm just right there.